Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for another web conference from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. This evening, we're especially lucky to have a very special individual with us, Dr. Robert Brown, the Chairman of Neurology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I know Dr. Brown personally, since I personally trained in Mayo Clinic there, and I can tell you he's one of the most gifted physicians I've ever met, and he's one of my role models. Bob, I want to thank you for joining us this evening. I'm sure lots of us are interested in knowing what is really the answers to the most common questions we have about brain aneurysm. This talk will start with a, um, a, show, a slideshow presentation and obviously will end with answering your common questions. I appreciate if you can please keep your questions until the end of the talk. Bob, thanks again and please go ahead. Thank you. And good day, everyone. Good evening or good morning, wherever you might be at. And I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here with you. And Aaron, uh, Dr. Cohen, thank you for those kind comments as well. Having just seen the questions come through even before we've had the opportunity to begin, fantastic questions that have already been entered into the system. And I look forward to answering questions uh, tonight. It's certainly one of the things I enjoy most about these types of sessions is having the opportunity to answer questions that you might have. I'm going to start out with a presentation that will last approximately 30 to 35 minutes. And I realize that this may be review for some of you, and hopefully some of this information will be new and will answer some of the questions you might have if you or a loved one or a friend has an unruptured intracranial aneurysm. So we'll go ahead and get started with the presentation, and I'm going to start with some of the basics just to make sure that we've adequately addressed some of the key background issues regarding what is a brain aneurysm. Then we'll address issues regarding who gets a brain aneurysm, and in particular, I want to address issues regarding screening. One of the common questions I receive from my many patients I see with unruptured aneurysms is do my loved ones need to be screened for an unruptured aneurysm? And if so, how should they be screened? We'll also talk about why they occur and whether there's anything that you can do to prevent the likelihood of having an aneurysm, what symptoms you might have related to that unruptured aneurysm and how it can be detected. And we'll talk quite a bit about the question, does the aneurysm need to be treated? If you have an unruptured aneurysm, does it need to be treated? And what helps to guide you and your physician in terms of making that decision? We'll talk about several other issues, other questions I'm commonly asked. Patients who have an unruptured aneurysm ask, can I take aspirin? My doctor's recommended aspirin for heart disease prevention. Can I take that? Can I take other blood thinners? Can I exercise? And all sorts of other questions that are applicable to one's everyday life activities. So first question though, what is a brain aneurysm? It's very important for us to get all on the same page, if you will, regarding the type of aneurysm we're talking about tonight is a saccular or berry aneurysm. As indicated on this diagram, this is an artery of the brain and an aneurysm is a small saccular berry-like bubble, if you will, that forms typically at the branch point. In other words, here's an artery coming up and it branches into two, but at this uh, weakening, at this weak spot on the artery, over the course of time, this little bulge has formed. And in another diagram, here's an example, an artery coming up, and here's this bubble at the top. So this is the type of aneurysm we're talking about tonight. There are other aneurysms, other types of aneurysms that occur in the body uh, that are non-saccular aneurysms, but the type of aneurysm we're talking about tonight, for the most part, is a saccular aneurysm. Now these are in general acquired lesions. That is, they're typically not present at birth. They're acquired over the course of one's life and they increase in occurrence as we get older. They're very uncommon in children. Now and then you'll see it, but it is distinctly uncommon for it to occur an aneurysm, a saccular aneurysm to occur in a child. And as I mentioned a moment ago, they occur at branching points of the major arteries in the brain. Most of them occur in the arteries in the front part of the brain, about 80%. And about 20% of people have multiple aneurysms. So it's always important for your provider. This is a key point that I always uh, stress to residents when I work with them, is always make sure if you see one aneurysm, look very, very hard for a second or a third or a fourth, because about one in five people will have multiple aneurysms. Now, uh, this is just a diagram that shows you where aneurysms uh, 